Hey folks, welcome back to Ndaba Africa. This is Chris. And for those of you in South Africa concerned about the departure of President Trump here in just a couple of days, just remember that every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> what am I talking about? Well, as per the norm, all ambassadors are to tender their resignation when a president leaves office and the next one comes in. Of course, in 2017, uh, the fake stream media made big news about this. All of these ambassadors have tendered their resignation, put up in arms about Trump being president. Just a lie, an utter lie. The norm is for an ambassador, political appointees, to tender their resignation when the new president is sworn in. If we follow form, we'll expect to see U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Alana Marks, offer her resignation on the 20th of January. And if form be held, President-elect Joe Biden will accept her resignation and she no longer be ambassador. At that point, we'll have to rely on a charge d'affaires for our issues in Pretoria. The 67-year-old naturalized American citizen born in East London recently suffered from COVID-19, but apparently has recovered. Congratulations to her for recovering. But she just cannot leave office without saying yet one more stupid thing before she's left. She's gotten the ire, risen the ire of many a South African with the lunatic comments that come out of her mouth talking about how wonderful the president is and she'd yet to meet the president. And she seems to be an actor for the deep state, even though she's a political appointee, certainly for some new world order. But let me share with you a little gem she offered today as she spoke in a virtual conference. She had the following to say, and she was talking about the establishment, the launch of American Voices Against Apartheid Project. So she had this to say. She said, I'm reminded of the young American student, Amy Beale, whose labor of love led her to Guguletu, where she was caught in a crossfire and lost her life in 1993. Her parents later established the Amy Beale Foundation, which offers development programs for challenged youth in vulnerable communities. Well, the last portion of that statement is actually accurate. Her parents did establish the foundation, and her father has passed away. Her mother's still around, 65 years of age. Of course, doesn't have her daughter these days, who was brutally murdered. Amy Beale, Ambassador Marks, was not caught in a crossfire and lost her life. Very dishonest, misleading statement. In 1993, Amy Beale, who was a graduate student working in South Africa covering women's issues and studying the challenges women face, particularly women of color, who she was focused on, was pulled from her car, stabbed, and brutally stoned to death by racist thugs in South Africa. Stabbed and stoned to death. No crossfire. She didn't lose her life. Her life was stolen from her by murderers. In his 1998 book, One Miracle is Not Enough, Rex von Skalvik, Skalvik said the following. Supporters of the three men accused of murdering Beale burst out laughing in the public gallery as the court in the, of the court when a witness stated how she groaned, the battered Beale groaned in pain. They laughed at her dying misery. Now, four men were convicted of her murder and went to jail and served a mere five years for the brutal, horrific, racist murder of Amy Beale, a foreign national in South Africa, an American citizen. Of course, the Clinton administration's response was muted and pathetic. But Amy Beale was butchered and murdered by thugs. And what was her crime? Well, she was white blonde hair and blue eyes. And for that, she was stabbed and beaten to death with stones. Not caught in a crossfire and lost her life. Ambassador Marks. Wow. In 1998, these horrific villains who stole her life from her at the age of 26, and she died in an agonizing fashion, they were granted parole. And they've been out of jail since 1998. 22 years they've been walking free, those who are still alive. By comparison, the beloved communist Chris Hani, who was assassinated by Yanis Valos in 1993, he also applied to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. But of course, this political body, with a farce that it was, was never granted a hearing. He remains in prison for his political killing. The court refused to grant him appearance before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and he refused to give him parole because they say he did not act on the orders of hire, so it wasn't a political killing. Well, then how do these vile four murderers who stoned to death 
Amy Beal get parole and forgiveness 22 years ago. If you think the scales are even remotely fair in South Africa, then you're clearly not paying attention. Ambassador Marks, once again, you're off the mark. You're completely confused as to what's happening in South Africa. It's unfortunate that we have had a succession of less than successful political appointments to South Africa. Perhaps it's time for an incoming president to look to someone in the civil service from the Foreign Service Officer Corps to fill this political position for a term and get things back in order. It has been a long time since we've had an ambassador to South Africa who's addressed our needs and not been a lapdog for the African National Congress. Wow. Anyway, folks, as I said, every cloud has its silver lining. You may be disappointed that Donald Trump is leaving office, or you may be joyful, whatever the case may be. But I think pretty much most everyone in South Africa will be happy to see the backside of Ambassador Marks when she departs Pretoria. Anyway, folks, if you don't subscribe or follow the channel, please take a second and do that and uh, smash the like button. Appreciate the support for the channel. And look on the bright side, South Africa. Lana Marks won't be with you much longer.